Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is... Aegis. Aegis. It's actually pronounced. A-E-G-I-S. Aegis. A shield or breastplate emblematic of majesty that was associated with Zeus and Athena. Protection. Controlling or conditioning influence. I don't know how to pronounce this word. Auspices. I know I pronounced that wrong. Auspice. Auspices. Sponsorship. Uh, Auspices uh, is uh, patronage or guidance. Uh, and control or guidance, especially by an individual group or system. So this is one of those words that I love because it goes in a million directions. I try to wait, try to figure out how to rope them all together. But you can go with, you know, a physical shield. You can go with overall protection of yourself or or, or a friend or something like that. Conditioning or controlling influence is great. Uh, sponsorship. Uh, or guidance that's also cool they're all very different you know they're all assistive assisting um, except for the controlling influence is a little different but yeah so there's a whole bunch of ways to go so I'm going to talk about how I went I wrote shield is to prevent to me Um, oh I also made a note of additional definitions these are old old Greek definitions was a violent windstorm the shield that we know, and a goat skin coat. So uh, shield to me is to prevent or to block, but it's not to stop someone else from doing anything. It's specifically to stop someone from doing something to you or to whatever you are preventing and blocking. So another note about it is it's not secret. A shield is usually very obvious. It might not be obvious at first, but it's not, not a hidden thing. And I wrote that your aegis, your aegis is up front and center and known to all. And not in all cases, but in this one. I said from thinking about it from a component sense, and that's kind of where I went with this. I didn't go mechanic, I didn't go theme, I went with component. Thinking of a shield or a wall as a component. So think about this little wall that you can put up to protect yourself. Uh, in a worker placement game, for example, uh, it lets you keep your worker at that location. So I put my worker down, and my next turn, I put a little wall there. Maybe instead of gaining the uh, whatever I get from putting my worker at that location, I take a little less to build a wall, or something like that. Now, another player could place a player next to the wall, because the wall would also create a place to place a worker. And they could uh, they could knock that wall down. And I was just really thinking of just like this expansive worker placement game where you place things, then you wind up placing other things, and with those things, they all prov- they all create new spaces. Uh, but the walls there, if they pl- place another worker there, they can knock it down. Now, if the workers were created in such a way that they could stack, you could just put a worker there, and another one could stack on top, which now might be taller than the wall, and they can go over it, and now claim the spot that you're that you initially claimed. So it was it was uh, kind of a way to kind of use the same space over and over. And to prevent other prevent others from from getting into that space, it's definitely a little uh, non traditional worker placement. It's a little more combative and touches on that area control or whatever. But uh, yeah, if you can add a worker next to the wall and a second on top to have them jump over, it's it's getting into something aegis related, I guess. So I, then I went into like a tableau building game. So with a tableau building game, I'm usually just engine building for myself to try to do other things that are happening outside. But my specific tableau, I said a a wall could protect an area of the tableau for my opponents. And it could do it in a couple different ways. One, maybe it prevents them from seeing it. And then if I claim to do something uh, that was behind that wall, I can be full of it. I can just completely make it up, which adds a, you know, a very bluffing deductive sense to a tableau building game which are very different usually not you know usually not mixed up too much um another thing is maybe uh your your opponents can copy your actions or anything from your from your uh tableau but not a protected one so they they can't copy that one 
And finally, maybe they can act, they can attack you, but not on the ones that you blocked with the shield. So that was another thing, but I wanted to get back to the core of it and step away from a generic shield because was this what's great about this word is the multi multi definitions and there will be another word that means shield and I just simply you know could go with any of these things so what I wrote for this was uh, taking on the form of an animal you're you know usually the Aegis would have some sort of animal or beast on there so the way that you use this uh, takes on that animal's form so Maybe we have all these different animal traits. It's a tiger. What is a tiger? A tiger is ferocious. Uh, it's fast. You know, so that's a faster type of shield to protect yourself. And maybe it's a game where uh, there's just waves of things coming to get you, and you're basically just st stopping them with your shield. You're just putting on this big for you know fortress uh, line at the front. You're just trying to stop them, but using the different variety of animals that are on these shields. Like maybe you are a non, like you're a pacifist people, but your uh, your shields will go all out if they have to. So maybe you're just you know you're you're waiting it out and you're getting in your your stance and you're waiting for these attackers to come and then the animals just just go loose. That was one side of it. The other one I thought was going back to Zeus, god of thunder. And I tried to figure out what is trying to what is trying to attack thunder, and like like what what does thunder want to prevent and block? And the interesting thing about it is thunder is a sound that comes from lightning, um, and lightning is these these positive and negative charges when they when they sort of interact, they uh, they just you know cause a lightning strike. Uh, so I thought about what protects it. And then it, I got into like a weird area where like, how do you protect yourself from lightning? And things you can do is, you know, you can stay in the house. There are, uh, you know, just different ways. Uh, stay away from an open field. Avoid water, for example. Uh, don't stand under a tree. So those are all sort of ways to not prevent lightning, but to prevent your self from getting struck by lightning so it's just kind of a weird tangent and that's pretty much as far as i got i looked at control and i think about the active player in a co-op game or something like that how they're controlling the battlefield um conditioning influence you know if influence is our our goal uh there's a whole bunch of that it can get very generic it could get very specific but i didn't um but i would like to see a co-op game where you're controlling a shield that has the uh, traits of an animal and also protects uh, your units. I control the shield on my turn and it also creates a space that another player could go to try to knock down the shield or the wall or things like that. That's just merging everything together, which is sometimes how uh, I'll try to start making a game. Not today though. It's been, uh, it's been quite a week here and I'm happy to be through it. We have uh, Nicole Amato, uh, formerly Nicole Klein, uh, up this weekend and we've got some cool words and some good stuff to talk about so we'll see you then and have a nice weekend and join in on uh, board game geek all right thanks see ya